All right, you probably haven't heard much activity from me for the last couple days. Um, if you followed my tweet the other day, though, I just became a grandpa, so I haven't been trading much. Um, <laughs> last night I put together a, a, uh, a watch list for our chat room at like 2 in the morning. Um, but I didn't trade much this morning because I'm super tired. Haven't had much sleep. So anyway, um, I threw one together now, and I am literally going to finish this, and I'm going to head off to bed. I'm, I'm pooped. Um, okay, M.O., uh, like five red days in a row. I showed you this one the other day. I still like it at this blue line here at support. You switch to 60s. You can see very nice bounces coming off of this. Uh, it's a, it's a, somewhere around 41.15, but remember, support's an area, not an exact number. Um, and so if this one puts in a flush down to that 41 or just above 41 area, um, and it's also sitting at the 50 day, which you can't see here. But anyway, uh, I'll be looking for an intraday bounce there. So that's that's um, MO. While I'm dealing with M's, let's look at MU real quick. This is one, it's such a strong stock. Um, this one, in my opinion, just needs to be watched, uh, especially, you know, today could have just been the market flush uh, that spooked MU. And I still like this a lot at uh, the 32 area. So, you know, it's at 30. It closed at, um, at 33.05, and so, um, you know, it, it would take almost like a gap down in the market and this thing to flush, but then I'll be looking for an entry around 32. If that happens, I'd be surprised if it happens. Let me real quick talk about the SPY. Um, you know, you had a pretty good down day today. Uh, most of you follow the news and know why, um, but generally, when everyone's thinking short, the very next day, uh, it might not work so great. So I have some lines drawn here. Let me switch to 60s. So some recent support lines. Um, I believe in after hour, <coughs> excuse me, in after hours. I don't have after hours on these charts. So closed at uh, actually looks like the spy closed at 195.71. The charts aren't always exactly right when you use 60 minute candles on e-signal, um, but it looks like uh, using the daily it closed at 195.71. See it there, um, and after hours, I can add that on real quick here. So in after hours. Um, it went down as far as uh, what was the low there, 194.81, and looks like it uh, finished the after-hour session at 195.40. So definitely had some a little bit of extra selling um, in after hours <clears throat> in the spy. So um, it, it is nearing some support here, and you can't just be too quick to jump in and say it's time to short. So um, there's some areas that I'll be looking for uh, that the spy can hold some of these blue lines here. And I've got some other stocks setting up long. Um, that'll be a good time to go long when the SPY is <clears throat> coming down into support. But anyway, I don't want to babble too much about that because there's no way of knowing by the time the market opens, um, you know, where the SPY is going to be, what's going to happen overnight. So I don't, I don't want to get bogged down in that. Um, I just like to have a list ready of stocks in case certain things happen. So M-U-M-O, another M, um, M-N-S-T. And this is uh, five days in a row. It did just break this last recent low um, from June 3rd, but it fell kind of far to get there. So a lot of times you get a rebound after doing something like that. Just glancing at this chart, most people would say, well, this is coming down to test um, the 63 area where it tested, uh, you know, here and here. And it might be, but also notice that the 200 day is right here. So um, I, I wouldn't mind uh, seeing an early flush into the 200 day, which is right around 66 bucks um, and maybe looking for a turn. Okay. Again, always with, with the external circumstances going on, the macro picture, always keep one eye on the SPY before taking any trade and try to trade in the direction of the of the SPY. Um, okay, so there's another one. Yahoo, Y-H-O-O, -O, uh, it's done really well bouncing off 33. Okay, you had this, uh, this one spike here down to 32.15, but it's back down to 33 again. So let's keep an eye on that, especially if the market uh, has some strength. I might be looking for a long if it can, uh, it looks like it's bouncing on an intraday basis around 33. Remember guys, I'm a day trader. I'm just looking for day trades tomorrow, okay? Um, NRG, um, I've had this on bounce watch for like three days, um, starting when it was coming into this support and it just keeps falling and I've done nothing with it. Again, I haven't been around the market very much either uh, because I was, uh, you know, at the hospital um, having a, have, okay, I wasn't having a grandbaby, you know what I'm saying. Uh, anyway, we had an addition to the family. Um, but this one is starting to get fast to the downside. You had, uh, you know, four kind of even days, and now today was kind of a fast day, pretty good volume. Um, I don't look at this chart and say, hey, there's great support right here. Um, you did have uh, some nice bounces off 3170 area. So actually, there is some support um, right here. So 
Not a ton, but back here you can see it. That line's not perfect, but anyway. Um, and I do like to put these lines on my chart at night, so then the next day when I'm looking at it, say on five minute candles, um, you know, I can see, hey, it's coming close to that line. Uh, so that's kind of a helpful hint. If you, if you have the time and you spot some support, throw a horizontal line on there and uh, it just makes it easier when you're looking at intraday charts. Okay, so that's NRG. Um, BIOF is in my notes because it had such a nice move. Um, this is Thursday, so it had a nice move on Wednesday and perhaps the market is what brought that thing all the way to a round trip from, from Wednesday's pop. But anyway, and you can see the difference in the volume uh, from Wednesday's pop to today. Uh, it's a thinner stock, but uh, it, actually you can see it's a really thin stock, but it makes really nice moves at times. That is not on the top of my list by any stretch. Um, WWE, man, I was watching this the other day and then today it broke out and I didn't even notice it um, until it looked probably like probably like this. So did it give a trade later? I mean, yeah, from you know the pullback near that 560, we like to look at bounce, but again, I wasn't there in the afternoon. Um, but anyway, this one is up into that gap, nice volume today. So if there's strength in the market, um, I'll be looking for a possible trade in uh, in WWE, um, let's use trend lines here, and you can kind of see that after the initial pop, this thing held up pretty well, right? And it's just kind of bull flagging there on fives. Um, you see it on fifteens as well. So if this gets back up over, you know, uh, twelve eighty five. I wouldn't be surprised to see a quick push through thirteen and a continuation day. Um, so keep WWE on watch. DNKN Dunkin Donuts. Who doesn't want to invest in donuts? Um, okay, nice volume, off support, and then on an intraday basis, there, I had to get after hours off there, but on an intraday basis, um, you know, it's just plodding along today, and then look at that, all of a sudden 180,000 shares, so there had to be some news there, and it really closed strong, gave a little bit back near the end of the day, but um, when I see stuff like that, you might not see it very well on the daily chart, right? It might just look like another day. It's not, it, this isn't a standout chart, but if you were trading today, then you know, um, you know, you had that intraday volume spike and this one's worth watching. So I actually have this on long watch um, for Friday. Uh, and you, you know, you do have nice volume and it is coming off support. So looking for some continuation um, in DNKN. That might be it, guys. Uh, you always want to keep KNDI on watch, although I mean, it certainly looks toppy here. But, um, you know, if you get down near that eight day moving average, I, I'd be looking for a law and that thing's super strong. Um, and then also this one, uh, I keep talking about this one in my uh, in my videos because I think one of these days it could explode. Now, I mean, you had this move back here. This is XGTI, by the way. Had this move back here to five, lower high, and now you're, I mean, you've got some nice basing going on. So the next move, you've got nice support right under it, okay? Um, versus these gaps up that it had, you know, way away from support. Now you've come back down to support and you're going sideways. Um, let's switch to like 30 minute candles and you can see I've got a line drawn there. This one's super interesting um, up over that, you know, 224, 225 area. Uh, if you can get up above that blue line, that 225, um, I think you could take out this this high of 235 and, and then it could just be people chasing and, and we'd be selling to them. So keep this one on a chart and watch for that move. Um, you just wanna see volume with it and you if it happens right at the open, I would shy away from that too um, or at least trade smaller, you know, you have to, judge the conditions as they as they occur and early early trades can be kind of scary especially in this market so i prefer things to settle down and then some of these things to start um triggering the way i'm looking for i've definitely babbled long enough so we'll see everybody tomorrow have a good night